So I'm from a place called Hackney in London. For those of you who haven't heard of Hackney, it's one of the most diverse boroughs in the UK, if not Europe. And it's otherwise known as the world in one borough. Growing up in Hackney, it wasn't easy. It had one of the highest rates of crime in the country, one of the highest rates of poverty. You know, in fact, it was known as the worst place to live out of 434 local authorities in the UK, just in 2006. However, fast forward 14 years and the transformation has been unthinkable. Hackney is now the hipster part of London. It's known as the home of the tech hub in London and it's London's nightlife. I'm really proud about my, where I'm from because I genuinely believe it's helped shape who I am today. And if you ever do visit London, make sure that you do visit Hackney. Otherwise, you've never truly been to London. This is a very long-winded question, but I guess I'd probably start from my life, my say's perspective. Um, of course, you know, the global pandemic is going to affect young people in many different ways. It already exposes and amplifies a lot of inequalities in our society, which disproportionately affects our generation. And for me, what's really important is, is that our, our generation has a voice in shaping and rebuilding society because we can't go back how things used to be and we've seen how you know many young people have lost their jobs have been placed on furlough schemes and many of the careers have been halted many of them are suffering through mental health issues many of them just feel neglected um, and it's really important that we give them that voice so one of the projects that i'm working on right now is called the quarantine question time uh, which is engaged with thousands of young people from around the world um, and the idea is really is to set up a digital space where young people can receive expert advice about coronavirus, uh, but also around the next question and the next phase, which is about how do young people um, shape society. And as a local councillor, you know, it's been an extremely difficult past six weeks, I'd say. And that's partly because, of course, there are so many uh, vulnerable residents um, who need support, you know, people who are not able to leave their homes, who need to do basic things like buy food. How do we get support to them? How do we support our community organisations? How do we support our local businesses, for example, our local economy, um, our local workforce, our environment, all of these things that we have to think about. And um, it's been a very busy six weeks, um, but I think we're doing really, really well. Um, are there things that we could do better? Of course, um, and that's why we're always continuously looking for new ideas. Um, but I think, you know, Hackney Council could be really proud of, its, uh, of the way it's dealt with the coronavirus pandemic. And I think that there are a lot of other boroughs, including other governments actually, who can learn from our approach. I first came across the Global Fund for Children for a project that I participated in called the Youth of Hackney, which brought together young people from all walks of life from our borough to play soccer, to keep us off the streets. It was some of the best experiences that I had in my childhood. We got the, the opportunity to travel around the country, to participate in so many different cool trips. And that's why I'm really excited uh, to be on the board of the Global Fund for Children, because it gives me the opportunity to help make a difference to the lives of so many children and young people who desperately need it. I'm really excited about being on the board of the Global Fund for Children because it gives me the opportunity to help make a difference to the lives of so many different children and young people from around the world who desperately need it. I first-hand witnessed the difference that a project supported by the Global Fund for Children could make to me and my friends. And I'm really excited and eager to roll up my sleeves and get involved and help support so many different grassroots organisations from Latin America to Africa to all over the world who are helping support children in need. In my opinion, uh, being youth-led is allowing young people to lead within an organisation and that's why I'm really proud that the Global Fund for Children set up the Youth Leadership Council uh, to really serve that purpose, helping ensure, helping strategize the, the organization's objectives, uh, working across different departments of the team, really driving that youth focus 
and also allowing the Youth Leadership Council this space to organise and connect with hundreds and thousands of young people from around the world, connect with its partners to help support children in need. And I think we are really serving that purpose. And I really, really hope that other organisations and other institutions can learn a lot from GFC's approach in being youth-led. In my opinion, GFC's work is so important because it's uniquely placed where it helps support grassroots organisations that other institutions ordinarily wouldn't reach. I experienced that in Hackney. And I genuinely believe that our network across many different continents, and I see it through my work through the Global Youth Leadership Council, we have an opportunity to help support children and young people who ordinarily would not be have access to those opportunities. So I'm really excited to be part of this global family, this global family which you know, gives a voice to people who ordinarily do not have a voice, who are often overlooked. And you know, we have a genuine opportunity to build a network that can last for the foreseeable future and help hopefully eradicate poverty and help support children in need. My favourite toy growing up probably was Lego and the reason why was because I've always enjoyed building things and it helped work my mind. Um, I didn't always listen to the instructions uh, and if I must confess sometimes when I walk past uh, toy stores even now I'm tempted to have a look in to see the latest editions of any new Lego games uh, but I often have to remind myself that I am 27 and my money is probably better spent elsewhere so I often walk past but you know one day I may be tempted to buy another Lego game so watch this space. When I was growing up I always wanted to be a probably I always wanted to be a politician um, not by name but I certainly wanted to be someone who can be there advocating helping support people and I think that's partly because of my background and what my family went through uh, when we were growing up um, in, in Hackney and you know the fact that we were immigrants in, 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 in the UK, uh, the fact that we had real difficulties actually um, gaining status to, to become citizens in the UK, um, that whole process of trying to understand why isn't no one fighting on behalf of us, why is it only us, why does no one care? Um, that very much sort of helped shape my thinking about being someone um, who is able to kind of advocate on behalf of people, make a difference to other people's lives. And I guess that's what I'm doing right now as a counsellor um, and I really enjoy it. And I think for me, the best part of being a counsellor is the smile that you see on many families' faces once you've uh, helped you know, achieve, hopefully, uh, what they've wanted. So um, definitely living the dream right now. The weirdest thing I've ever eaten is probably octopus. Love seafood, not octopus. Very squidgy. Yeah, scrap. My biggest pet peeve, ooh, this is very, very, very important. So if you're watching this, make sure the next time you see me, you do not do this because it really puts me off. Whew. Okay, here it goes. I really hate people who are socially unaware or spatially unaware. So if you're in the London tube underground, and Londoners will know this, you get people who are just walking on the platform and they will just suddenly stop. Not looking around them, not seeing if anyone's in a rush behind them, they will just suddenly stop. Or they'll get onto the tube and as they get on the door, they don't try to make space for you. Or they get on the escalator coming down and they'll stand on the wrong side. For me, that really, really annoys me. So, if you ever come across me, just make sure that you are taking the time to be aware around your settings and where you are. If I could have a superpower, it would probably be to duplicate me and place me at different places at the same time. And the reason why I say that is because I really hate saying no to people. 
I don't like letting people down. So when I get invited to go to do public speaking or to attend various meetings on very important um, subject matters, I don't like saying no. However, it's not always possible that I could be everywhere at the same time because of the commitments that I have. So if I could find a way or if I could, there could be multiple me's that could be present at those meetings to both keep my friends happy, but also to participate in very, very important discussions, uh, that would be great. However, I'm not holding my breath because I know that that's impossible. So there you go.